right, we are live. Welcome to the Lust is Boring podcast. Today, uh, we have the unveiling of the book Forge that Matt Fred and I have been working on for a long time. So Matt, um, welcome here to Lust is Boring and Facebook Live. Yes, lovely to be with you. Thanks so much. I'm pumped to see the book. Even though I won't actually get to hold it in my hands today, I'm still excited to see it. Yeah, it ships from the printer today. Um, I got mine overnighted last night, uh, or actually today, um, but I haven't opened it yet. We're going to do the live wow, unboxing that, that, here. That must have taken some self-control. I'm not sure if I could have waited. I would have just ripped into it. Yeah, that's why I had it shipped to me first instead of you. So. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, a couple things before we get rolling here. Um, one, want to make sure to thank uh, our sponsor, Hollow. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, please make sure to do that. You just have to go to uh, lust or hollow.com slash lust is boring to try out the app for 14 days for free. Uh, it's the number one Catholic prayer app. They've got more than 500 prayers on there for every single need and occasion uh, for contemplation, meditation, trouble falling asleep, uh, you name it. It's it's on there. Matt, I imagine you, you've tried Hollow before, I'm sure. Yeah, it's actually really good. Like, it's it's nice to have Catholic stuff that's really high, very sophisticated and well-produced, you know? Yeah. And it, it is 100% Catholic, super well put together. I'd really recommend it. Yeah, and if you got kids, you can, you know, pop it in, you know, turn it on, plug it into the car, you know, pray some with them on the way to school or whatever, uh, on a jog, listen to some prayers, rosary, whatever it is. It's all there at Hollow, so check that out. Also, uh, coming up this summer, we've got our first pilgrimages that we've ever done. Uh, we're going to be going to the Holy Land, and then a second pilgrimage uh, to Krakow, Poland, to walk in the footsteps of Pope John Paul II, or the Son of God, depending on which one you want to go to. And I'll be doing those with Father Agostino Torres, one of the Franciscan friars of the Renewal, who's just awesome. And so if you just go to chastity.com slash pilgrimage, uh, you'll get some information on those things. So bring your friends, bring your family. It's coming up uh, this summer. Uh, also, one more thing on the radar. December 15th, Chastity Project is going to be having an online gala live where we're going to be announcing the biggest project that we have ever done uh, in the history of Chastity Project. It's going to revolutionize the whole way we do things moving forward, and we want everybody to tune in. Uh, and so you can subscribe to our e-newsletter or just watch on social media. We'll be sending out some announcements uh, for that free event. So we're going to have some great speakers on there, and it's just some really exciting news um, for the ministry. So. But on to today's topic, uh, the release of the book Forged and how to defend love from lust. Basically, men versus lust. You know, whoever's going to win this battle is going to determine the outcome of, of a man's vocation, the outcome, I think, in many ways of civilization. And they say that necessity is the mother of invention. And so with this book, you know, Matt Fred and I have been speaking on this topic for a long time. And I know, Matt, a after the talks, guys come up, you know, like, oh, man, I've been really struggling with this, but I can't break <clears throat> free. What do I need to do? And I was always like, well, look, try, try this app and, and then go to this website and, and read mm -hmm. that blog and do this website too. And then there's a really good book over here. And, then, and I just felt like I was hodgepodging all my advice. And I was like, man, what if we just had one thing we could hand a guy, whether he's struggling with porn or masturbation, going too far with his girlfriend or even struggling in his marriage in this area. I just wish I had just one thing that I could just hand the guy and say, look, this is what you got to do. And so because it didn't exist, I reached out to Matt and Matt said, let's do it. And I think, Matt, you just reminded me before the show that uh, you actually kind of proposed this more than a decade ago. Yeah, I was living in Ireland. I don't think we had met or maybe we did in England briefly. And I was starting to do this sort of anti-pornography work. And I reached out to you with a book idea and you suggested we do it together. And so we, we uh, you probably it was so long ago now, I mean, 13, 14 years ago, I think. Um, was it that long ago? Uh, no, more, yeah, probably like 12 years ago. And anyway, we, we, we never kind of got around to it and never really fleshed out. I've done some other things um, on, on the topic of pornography, but it was super jazzed to be able to, to team up with you to do this book. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I've seen it in my own ministry, you know, guys coming up to me afterwards. One guy came up to me and he shared that he's really getting addicted to just not just pornography, but like hardcore violent pornography of yeah. women. And he said, it's getting so bad. I'm, I'm just starting to want to do it. Like I, I want to experience this in real life. And, you know, it's like, whoa, boy, you know, if we, if we don't get a handle on this thing, you know, right now when this kid's 15, 16 years old, by the time he's 23, I mean, you got a monster right there. And yeah. so, you know, immediately I got plugged in with his family. We got counseling lined up for the guy. To Good really for you. The roots of where this is going from, you know, but it's, it's happening. Like I, I remember seeing recently some woman who's a, like a pediatric nurse with sexual abuse survivors who are kids. And she said like, by far, 
the number one perpetrator of sex abuse against kids is not a live-in boyfriend, a clergyman, or some guy down the street. It's 11 to 15 year old boys who've been exposed to porn because they see it on the iPad, you know, for a couple of years. And then their sister has a slumber party with their eight year old cousin and stuff happens and it never gets reported. And these poor girls drag this stuff into adulthood without ever having closure or healing. And so if this message is not given often and young and perseveringly, I mean, the, the wreckage that'll happen culturally is, is unimaginable. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'm super pumped we have this. I mean, I've written a book called The Porn Myth uh, with Ignatius Press, but uh, it's not really something I would want to hand to a teenager necessarily because there's some there's some in, in, intense content in it. And I so I also haven't had something to be out of hand to a teenager or, a, you know, someone in university, but, you know, that's not as intense as my other book. So I am just really thrilled about this one. Yeah, and, and one of the neat things about this is um, we don't sell them individually. They must be purchased in pairs. Um, right now, if you pre-order the thing, it's going to be available next week to ship, um, is that we'll just throw the second one in there for free. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because this can't be some Lone Ranger victory. You, you got you to gotta have a partner with you. So we want dads to do it with their sons. I mean, I'm starting with my 14-year-old boy uh, tomorrow wow. on this thing. We're going to do it. That's five. amazing. You know why I'm doing that? Because they got me this mug. <laughs> dad. And so we are going to be doing that thing together father son guys in the dorm doing it together um high school guys campus ministry like no more isolation like no more shame we got to band together as brothers father son and break through this thing you know so Mm. so without further ado let, let's All do right. it. You know, let, let's open up this puppy. So, this is so exciting. Cause like when you write a book, I mean, Matt, you know, you've written a bunch of books. It's like, it's like giving birth, right? I mean, I mean, with the, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's not morning sickness and labor pains and epidurals and stretch marks and the ring of fire and like all that stuff. But it, it, with the exception of those little details, it's substantially it's ex- the same, right? It's exactly like it apart from those details. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, it's so just a labor of love <laughs> into it. Uh, and so without further ado, we're going to, yeah, yes, I am using less with these on, on, online, someone trolled me and then had some nasty comments about my scissors. But yes, I do do my kindergarten homework in my office with them. So, ah, ah, okay. See, they had to double wrap it, didn't ah. they? Oh, my. The suspense is killing everybody right now. So, if you're listening to this on the podcast, um, I'll hold it close to the mic so you can just feel the excitement in your ears <laughs> right now. So... Oh, uh, uh, okay, we're getting closer here. Pe- nah, they put it in another. Oh, wow, this oh my is like, goodness, it never like ends. Russian egg things. Oh, look at this. It's probably in saran wrap, too. Oh, look it at is that. In saran wrap. Ooh, it is in that's saran nice. Wrap. So gotta, oh, this is. I gotta like bite this thing. Okay, there we go. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Saran wrap off. Forged. Oh, that oh, looks boom. really good. Uh, I love the look, size of it. Look at that handsome Australian. On he that. is really handsome, to be fair. So. So yeah, so we were trying to find an image for the cover and uh, we couldn't find a cool sword. My friend, who's the graphic designer, actually had a sword. He had some medieval sword. So they did a photo shoot. I don't know what he's doing <coughs> with a medieval sword, but you know, yeah. Doesn't matter. So yep, and so we got it right here, and on the back it says defend love from lust and you know, you always gotta smell a book. Old books. I like the size of it. It, it. it it looks smaller than a normal sized kind of book. Is that yeah. right or no? no it, it's yeah. Well, it's a little smaller in terms of the dimensions. It's only about 170 pages too, which means about uh, five pages a day for reading it. It's a yeah. No, I mean I mean dimensions. I meant dimensions. I yeah. like the size of it. It's like a nice uh, almost pocket sized book by yeah, the look of it. Basically pocket size. Um, man, super jazz. This thing's finally out. That's so exciting. Oh so so what, what's in this thing? The, the way that we designed it is that a, a lot of times I think when people approach the topic of pornography, um, it's like they take one angle or another, like it's the spiritual angle. We just got to do more rosaries, hit those sacraments. And like, that's super important. You know, other people take, it's just like a, you know, a white knuckle physiology thing. You just got to train your will and you know, other people's just psychology. So what we try to do in here is a fully human approach, meaning we're going after the physiology, neurology, and psychology. We're going after the theology as well as the spirituality and the pastoral approach, masculinity, femininity. And so what we do, it's a 33 day journey. And every day uh, you wake up a little earlier, you do a little Lexio Divina, and then you do the, med- the reading for the day with the exercises. And then on the day one, you text the word forge to this phone number. And yes. then you send in your email 
And then every single day for 33 days, we're going to send you a new video from somebody different. And so to tackle pornography from a theological angle, we got Christopher West, we got Jeff Cavins on there. Uh, in terms of spirituality, we're going to have Father Mike Schmitz, Father Jacques Philippe talking about he filmed from France and sent us a video on how to maintain your interior <clears throat> peace even when you fall. We got Sister mm -hmm. Miriam James, uh, Mother Miriam of the Lamb of God. Then going psychology, neurology, we've got Dr. B Greg Bataro, Dr. Peter Kleponis, uh, even an evangelical counselor named Jay Stringer who wrote a great book um, called Unwanted. And then just from marriage and family, masculinity and femininity, we got Chris Stefani, got Matt Frad, Paul J. Kim. And then one of the days, day four, which is lift up your hearts. Like, why are you motivated to do this and break free? Uh, we put, you know, announcement on social media, like, ladies, would you submit a video, 10, 15 sec seconds long, encouraging men in this mm. battle? And we got some of the most awesome videos. Really? Incredible young women. 38 women uh, in, a, in a nine minute video. Boom, boom, boom. Of these women saying, guys, just the fact wow. that you're in this fight makes you a cut above the other men out there. So persevere. We're praying for you and fight for love of your future bride. And like, guys need to see that stuff. Because like if a guy yeah. can, you know, meet the queen before he goes out to battle, you know, he's like, okay, I'm going to lay it all out there on the battlefield. You know, this is for my, my wife, my kids, my queen. And so we're trying to lift up their hearts. So they're not motivated by the shame and guilt, but for love. And if they're motivated by that, I mean, they can overcome any desire. And so the topics we look at is, you know, getting to the roots of those desires instead of just, you know, treating it like, you know, you just got to get rid of your lust. We got to go down to the roots identify your triggers. Uh, we even talk about how to renounce your affection for sin and how to like sacrifice your desire to be tempted. Because a lot of times it's like, you know, we want a little temptation, right? So we can kind of savor that and then overcome it and feel heroic. But you know, how do we renounce that affection that we keep in our mm -hmm. hearts for sin? accountability, uh, how to pray for your temptations instead of just against them, uh, counseling, prayer, sacraments, all this stuff we tackle in this book. And we also use a lot of content from the book that Matt, you did with Life Teen called Victory and that app. And we integrated that in here too. Oh man, I'm just so excited. I, I love I love that you get so much more than a book when you get this book. You get all of those videos as well. This is something I wish that I had. When I was 17, 18, 19, I wish somebody had have passed me this book. And uh, man, and, and having having read through it and seen it, like you did a great job, Jason, in just kind of organizing all of the content as far as like the saint quotes and the challenge and all that. It's it's so well done and I'm just su super proud of it. And yeah, it's funny. I remember you brought this idea up to me. I was sitting outside of a store and I, I loved the idea and immediately we prayed a memorare just uh, offering the whole thing to the Blessed Mother and offering these young men and their future wives, the future vocations, the Blessed Mother. So uh, I'm just super excited to see all the fruit that this bears. No, I'm, I'm pumped up. And the, and the idea where Forged came from is that like in order to take a chunk of metal and turn it into a sword, it goes through a forging process. You heat it up to like 2000 degrees. And then that actually, when, when it gets softened like that through the heat, it actually changes the crystal structure of the metal and rearranges it in a way where it's actually stronger. But mm -hmm. in order to pound it, you've got to soften it. And so the first, you know, 10 days or so of the program, you know, we're not strengthening the guys. We're kind of softening them up. Like, hey, let's go into the heart. Let's go to the root. Let's go to the memories, the wounds. Let's take a deep dive. And so after those 10 days, you might not feel stronger, but you're more malleable. Yeah. And after you've been soft, you know, then we start pounding on you and <laughs> your, you know, discipline and all that stuff. And, and that that shapes the sword and then finally it's kind of polished to perfection you know and and so these 33 days it's not like hey do the program you're scot-free after 33 days it's like no after 33 <clears throat> days you're gonna have an arsenal of weapons that you're gonna need to have at your disposal for the rest of your life it's kind of like when you know like lord of the rings where were they going into I forget, you know, who was there? The, the white wizard was there, and they were going into... Oh, you mean, uh, the, you mean at Elrond? Or, or the, no, they are yeah, going right. to see King Theoden when he was under oh, right. the trance of Wormtongue and uh, Saruman, and they're like, okay, give me your weapons, you know, and they start handing... The, the elf right. has got his one, this one, that one, that one, he starts pulling it all out. You know, in the Christian life, we need to be that armed for the daily assault on our senses that that's going to come. And so the idea is just equip these guys with the weapons they need. And I, and I think in the end... The big blessing that's going to come from this is 
you know, what's the whole big problem with porn? I mean, it's just like some private issue and like, isn't chastity kind of restrictive? Well, you know, this book Forge is more than just against porn. It's victory against lust. And the, the goal of this thing is an interior freedom so they can be free to love. And one of the ways I love that John Paul II looked at this is he said, you know, when we talk about the book of Genesis and I were to say to you, okay, book of Genesis talks about original, everyone would say sin. But what John Paul points out, it's like, no, no, this isn't mm. the story of original sin. It's a story of original nakedness, original unity, original innocence, all of these things that in the beginning, there was this ah. unity, not just between God and man and within man and himself and his body and soul. There was a unity that existed between man and woman that Adam had this ability because of the purity of heart to bestow upon Eve this gift of the peace of the interior gaze that when he looked at Eve, he, Eve did not feel that she had to hide from his gaze because he did not see her as an object for consumption, for his selfish gratification. Her body revealed her goodness as a person. Her body mm -hmm. revealed this invitation to love in the imitation of God's love. But with the entrance to sin, came shame whereby she no longer had this piece of the interior gaze. She felt the need to clothe herself, you know, in, in a sense of protection through modesty to make a, a pathway for real love. And, and how does this apply from the Garden Eden until now? I got an email this week and listen to what this young woman said. She talks about Catholic dating and how frustrating it is because even the good Catholic guys, a lot of them are still hooked on porn and stuff. And listen to what she said when she found out the guy that she was interested in is still looking at the stuff. He's, he struggles from time to time trying to get better, but keeps messing up. She said, I get uncomfortable with guys who look at that stuff. It's like <clears throat> they all have this negativity and bitterness inside. They have to get out. And sometimes the things they say or laugh at makes you feel so weird. And the idea of going on your honeymoon with this guy is not attractive or even comfortable anymore. So we broke up a month ago. But you hear that, what she's revealing is that inner angst of knowing I'm not being looked at rightly. And so the ultimate goal of chastity is to give a woman the peace of the interior gaze so that she knows when you look upon her, it's not for your gratification, it's because you see truly her goodness revealed through her beauty. And so it's a gift, it's an ability, and, and so it's not something we need to think of as restrictive and whatever. And so really, I think of it as the path to true freedom. So. Matt, any other thoughts in terms of the, the reader's stuff they're going to get out of the book? <clears throat> well, I got a different question. I mean, you're the yeah. publisher of this book, and I'm super, I'm super grateful for it. But what's our plan to like pump this thing out? That's one of the things I've always loved about the work you've done. You've always been super interested in just like showering these things from the sky, from helicopters or some yeah. such. Yeah. Well, one, one of the things that the book, um, you can get them in pairs, um, but you can also buy them in packs of 10 for $3 a piece. Because we know most youth ministers and Catholic high school teachers have a six-figure budget upon which they can yeah. spend for teaching. They don't have the money. And so we got to meet them where they're at. And so we're just making them three bucks a copy. So, man, get this thing for your high school youth group. There's a Catholic high school in town that had me speak to the boys the other day. And I said, hey, this thing's coming from the printer. You guys are going to be the first high school boys in America to get this thing. And, and they're pumped up to get started on this. And like, hey, let's do this as kind of a band of brothers. And so one thing we're doing is making them super cheap. And then a second thing, we can't leak it out just yet we're going to announce it okay. um, on the december 15th the live event of what we're planning on doing on showering the globe with these things and so we've really uh, through some prayer and you know consultation with some incredible minds come up with a game plan that's really going to engage the whole church militant to be able to evangelize even if you're not the speaker you're not the motivational guy whatever there, mm. there's a plan where you can fit in where we can get this thing out big time like let's supply this to our priests as penance in the confessional because it's yeah, not yeah. a priest's job to be your counselor. He doesn't have the time necessarily, the bandwidth of a parish of 5,000 families to handle everyone's issues. You go to confession, hey, he can give you absolution, but let's give him the tools to help you get the formation you need. Um, that sounds awesome. And then is there a specific page that we can send people to? to, to? I know if it's chastity.com slash product slash forged, is there anywhere else people can go quickly to check out the book online? Yeah, chastity.com, right there on the landing page, you're going to see a banner for Forged. You can click that. Um, we're also going to have a landing page for the book itself, which is just going to be awesome. chastity.com slash Forged. And so that's up right now. We've got different resources on there where you can connect to like the Victory app, which is great, Covenant <clears throat> Eyes, and some of the daily readings and things like that. 
like that. So you can connect through that. You oh, can, yeah, this looks uh, awesome. Yeah, so all the stuff is going to be available there to connect to. Um, and then I think we're going to have the videos available to launch starting tomorrow. We just got the last video yesterday in for the series of 33. But, I mean, that's one of the things I'm most excited about is it's not yeah. one talking head every day for 33 days where it's like, okay, I kind of heard this before. I, yep. I, I just knew guys get bored of me in 33 days in a row, so let's make it fresh every single day. So you can hear, like, Sister Miriam James Heidland talking about how the beauty of the love that woman heals. And it's just that, and it's just, there's so many different angles that could be taken on this. I, I just figured, okay, we got to tap into whoever's the best of the best of that specific topic, reach out to them. And, you know, thanks be to God, like 99% of the people we reached out to said, yeah, we're in, let's do this. <laughs> so it's a, really a communal effort on behalf of the church that I could not be more excited uh, to give to the well, church. Well, I tell you, as soon as uh, COVID restrictions lift and I'll be traveling and speaking again, I can't wait, wait to be sending boxes of these to all of the schools I speak at. Yeah, no, it's really neat because this is the first time we've really turned a book into an experience. You know, usually it's like, okay, here's your book. You read it, you know, you're kind of done. You know, but the, the whole point of this book is to create the brotherhood and fellowship. Because if you get, if you establish that piece, man, you're going to see far more fruit and a life of brotherhood than yeah. you can get from any program or any book. I mean, that's where the change happens because just when you're around good guys, man, I, I don't know, just the simplest, I don't know your life, but like sometimes you just have a good conversation with a godly guy and you're kind of ruminating on that for weeks sometimes. Just some of the stuff they said or the way that they live. We got to yeah. be around other good guys because iron sharpens iron. Yeah, and no, I totally, I got men like that in my life and I see the peace that they have. I see the relationship with our blessed law that they have. And I see that it goes deeper than just the surface. It's, uh, it's more than just a hobby and it's, there's something of real substance there in life and it's something I long for. So couldn't agree more. And obviously one of the points we make so strongly in this is the importance of an accountability relationship and, and accountability has become somewhat of a buzzword, but just, just someone in your life who knows you at your best and at your worst and who loves you and isn't going to leave you. I mean, it's just so bloody important that we have that. And that's why I'm so glad people buy a book. We'll send them a free one. Um, what a great way to invite another brother to walk along beside you. Super pumped, man. Super yeah. pumped. And I think a lot of dads too, like dads want to bring this message to their kids, uh, but they don't know where to begin. Cause I remember speaking mm. at a, a group of parents or like 800 parents. And I said like, okay, how many of you were given like a real clear explanation from your parents on chastity and all this stuff? Do you know not a single parent raised their hand yeah. out of 800? And now your kids are up to more, way more than the parents were as teenagers culturally, and the parents don't even know where to begin. And so it's like, okay, well, this is where we can kind of step into the breach and say, hey, look, you wives that are watching or listening right now on, on YouTube or on the podcast, get this thing for your <clears> husband <throat> and say, honey, can you do this with our son? Because as a husband, it's a lot easier. It's like, okay, all right, I can do this. You know, get up with my son a couple minutes before school. That usually we get up like tomorrow. Usually we get up at 6.10 to get the kids ready for school. I'm just going to get up with Colby at 6 o'clock. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're going to get up, just make sure we're awake, and then dive into the Lexio Divina. Hey, the so i got a question for you that I think yeah. some people might be having. They might be thinking, okay, so you're reading this with your son, and I know, Jason, you speak to a lot of teens. So is this really appropriate for me if I'm 32 or 28, or is this more something for kids? Uh, certainly it isn't, but maybe just kind of assure people that that's the case. It's only for guys who wrestle in any way, shape, or form with lust. If you're mm. past that or not there yet, this book is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> but if, provided you still have one of those things on your wrist called a pulse, um, you probably <laughs> are wrestling in this area one way or another. But with each parent, you know, it, it's different because um, some kids need it earlier. Some kids need yep. it a little bit later. That's why the parents are the primary sex educators, not the chastity speakers, the schools, or the government, because like yeah. some kids need this real early. I remember one, I saw a kid in my audience once, he's like 10 years old, and you know, I kind of pulled his grandma aside who was with him, like, you know, just, just you know, today's talks more for like high school kids. And she said, I know, he needs it. I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, you know what's going on in his life. So yeah. everybody's different. So parents got to gauge, okay, is my boy ready for this? You know, and if they are, you know, if they're a teenager up, you know, yeah. they're, they're getting the culture thrown in their faces and we have to intervene instead of being like, you know, my kid <clears throat> never talks to me about his struggles with impurity on his own. You know, what's he waiting for? Dude, kid's not going to come to you nine times yeah. out of 10. 
we have to intervene, even if it's a little bit awkward and say, hey, boy, uh, you know, I got this dude thing. You know, we're just going to do it together. We're going to learn as we go together. And uh, and it just can open up that conversation. And I think kids, uh, what's exciting is my son's actually excited about this. And you know, he's really a 14 year old boy. Like, yeah, he wants, he wants to sleep in until one o'clock in the afternoon at any. I wish my time. kids wanted to do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the fact that he's like cool with getting up at 6 a.m. and doing some Lexio Divina and watching some videos with dad. You know, you could just see it in his eyes. You know, he's like, okay, yeah, yeah. He's kind of pumped because, you know, he saw me putting together the videos of like the one with 38 different young adult, beautiful women talking about living this out. And I could tell he was like, oh, this is going to be kind of neat. This, this is cool. So, so could, couldn't be more pumped up. But you know what I want to do um, before we wrap this up? I want to do whatever, every time I get a book, um, the very first thing I do is a memorari. I actually do nine memorari. We'll just do the first one now. Um, <laughs> you can finish the eight the after. <laughs> afterwards. Um, but essentially what I do, it's called, it's called an express novena. Uh, Mother Teresa would do this um, not in uh, petition for something. She would actually pray it in thanksgiving for the fact she knew she was going to get it. Uh, you know, that's how bold her confidence was in that prayer, that kind of express novena. And so uh, what I do is I just, I consecrate, you know, each time I start writing, I do a memorari, but then when it comes out, non-memorari's to just consecrate this thing to the Blessed Virgin Mary, that it might be not just successful, that it'd be fruitful. Uh, you know, yeah. so this morning when I was in mass and the, the priest elevated the host, I just looked at that host and thought of every mm. man that's ever going to read that book. And, you know, it's elevated the chalice. I just put them all in the chalice, you know, just, just kind of, and if everybody could kind of join together now, band together in intercession and every guy reads this book to pray for the other men, you know, we can kind of create this tsunami of grace. That's going to make this thing a lot more fruitful than just anything we could do by, by our words and our videos. So yeah, that sound amen. good. Let's, that sounds great. Let's give it to her. In the name of the father, the son, the Holy spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, yes. sinful and sorrowful. O oh Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. St. John Paul the Great, pray for us. St. Joseph, terror of demons and guardian of the Virgin, pray, pray for, for us. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, um, yeah, dude. Glory to Jesus Christ. So, w when's it when's it showing up on my doorstep? Because I tell you what, as soon as it does, I'm gonna whip out my phone and I'm gonna do a whole video of opening it, uh, so people can check that out on my YouTube channel as well. But w when's it coming to me? Yours got shipped from the printer today, uh, and so the Ooh. printer's I think in Illinois, so could be there in a couple, two, three days, I think. Awesome. And then it's gonna. Oh, land. that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm I'm heading up to. Uh, Oh, where am I going to? Pennsylvania to speak to about 60 boys on Tuesday. Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So God willing, it should be there in time. And then it's going to land at our warehouse um, in Illinois, probably just, uh, I don't know, it's Friday or, Friday or Monday. And then we're going to start shipping it out. But um, oh, if you man. order before it gets to the warehouse, um, like I said, the second copy is free. So it's basically like half off or whatever. Um, but then after it's in the warehouse, uh, you got to get two copies at once because we just want to drive guys toward brotherhood. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, uh, and then on December 15th, we're going to announce the big game plan, not <laughs> just for this, uh, but everything we're doing in the ministry uh, to bring ah. everybody who's ever been connected to our ministry into it in a brand new way so that together we can do wow. so much more for the church than we could ever do apart. Um, but, but again, a uh, couple last little notes. One, don't forget the pilgrimage. If you want to come with us to Krakow or the Holy Land, go to chassis.com, go to the pilgrimage there. Um, and then also you want to support our program, uh, check out us on Patreon and then patreon.com slash Jason Everett. Also check out patreon.com slash Matt, is it Matt Frad or Pints of the Coins? Yeah. Matt Fred. Matt Fred. So if you go to Matt Fred's, uh, Pines, his Patreon page, you actually get more cool stuff on Matt's page than my page, but just for <laughs> self-disclosure, we're working on it. But on both of ours, you get free different swag and access to uh, you know, content early and exclusive content uh, to, to help form you. And so you can support Pints with Aquinas and subscribe to that awesome podcast over there on their Patreon and support us on ours as well. And you know, dude, five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, it's like what? the price of Chipotle, you know, once a month. Um, but what it does for our ministries is huge, helping us to do all the behind the scenes stuff, the video editing and the advertising, the marketing, the microphones, all the stuff behind the scenes. You're the guys that make our whole shows exist through your generosity. And so uh, I would also pray and ask you, please intercede for the guys who are gonna read this book. The, the future husbands, the future fathers, the future priests. Uh, I remember talking to a, a guy once who works a lot with young seminarians, and he was talking about how much they struggled with pornography in the seminary. 
And I couldn't believe the statistics he was throwing at me of what he's seeing in the seminary. <clears throat> guys still hooked on this stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're kidding, man. I didn't realize. We need to bad. start a GoFundMe account and, and, and like blast this to every single seminary in America. Yeah. Like what if we got uh, the, the, the addresses that, you know, Mundelein and, you know, everyone across the country. And it also just, makes you know, a, it, that second one we'll send you could also make a nice awkward uh, Christmas present. You could just give it to somebody and say, you look like you need this. I, you know, that, that's an option for you. You could do that. And that's sticking out of your stocking. <laughs> I mean, would that warm your Christmas morning or what? Yeah. yeah. This anti-porn book. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, but like I said, it didn't just born. It didn't like maybe porn's not something you struggle with or like, you don't struggle with masturbation or whatever, but it's like, yeah, my imagination kind of gets away from me from time to time. Or yeah, I'm, I'm even struggling with objectifying my wife. You know, these are the tools we all need to need as Christian men. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're a boyfriend or a bishop. Like we need this. It doesn't matter where you are, your state in your life. Chastity is something uh, that helps you with the integration of the sexuality all across the board. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, and uh, don't forget to tune in to Pints with Aquinas. What, what's your next show coming out? What are the next kind of things you guys are covering? Oh, let's there? see. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be interviewing Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen, who plays Our Blessed Lord, oh, if you've cool. seen that show. And then That's I've awesome. got Carlo Broussard coming up on Friday. We're going to be talking all about purgatory. Got a, got a ton of stuff coming out. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I was uh, I, I saw him do a post on uh, I think he was doing Catholic NYC and he had his like little reading stack of books behind him. And he actually had sitting there the book I wrote on St. John Paul II. Oh, and wow. I pointed out to my kid, I'm like, look, look, like Jesus reads my book. <laughs> <laughs> like that, and an endorsement from the son of man. So if he's listening to me, you need to listen to me. Oh, yeah. You know, if Jesus is looking to my writing for inspiration. I mean, that's what you know. <laughs> then your kids better be listening <laughs> gotta, to you, too. Check out for some lightning here. So, um, yeah, so, so definitely check that out. That's going to be an like, yeah. So if you haven't seen The Chosen, where do people go to? Is it Pure Flix or VidAngel? Where, where do people go to get that? Uh, that VidAngel. Awesome? I think they also have their own app, but uh, it, I could, I highly recommend it because when my kids first told me about it, because they were watching it with my wife, I thought, okay, here's this, here's another kind of cheesy rendition of the New Testament. I didn't mean to be cynical about it, but I've just seen so many poor renditions of it that I wasn't terribly excited. But I sat down and I was like, oh, wow, this is really good so uh, i would highly recommend people check it out yeah ch check that out and someone also left a comment here online uh asking can we get the book in australia uh you can we're going to be releasing the ebook in a couple days so you can and it's just 700 dollars to ship it no yeah. what is it to ship it <laughs> as a fellow australian who gets upset with americans charging too much for shipping how much does it cost you know yeah no we're actually already on top of that perusia media what charbel is already printed it he actually got the copies printed before we did in America. And so uh, Perusia Media is going to be you launching ASAP. So you're not going to have to pay internationally shipping. Just check out Perusia, P-A-R-O-U-S-I-A -A Media. And, uh, and and they're already on top of that. So Dude, you are such a gift to the church, Jason Bloody Everett. Oh. I don't care what your wife says. Well, God, God just knew I couldn't handle a real job, so he gave me this one. So <laughs> whatever, whatever works. Uh, it's so great. Good for you. That's so exciting. They're yeah. doing great work down there in Australia. They are. They are. They're kind of like uh, the Augustine Institute or Lighthouse Catholic yeah. Media, kind of to Australia. Doing all. Yeah. Charbel is doing amazing. Charbel is kind of under. Yeah, he is. So, well, God bless you. Thank you all for joining us. Don't forget to get forged. If you're a guy, get it yourself. If you're a wife, a girlfriend, give it to your husband or your boyfriend or your future ex boyfriend, whatever the case may be. Uh, every guy needs it. God bless you. We'll be praying for you. Good being with you today. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.